Testing, testing, one, two. Came with its own tape deck and DJ set. I just stuck a um, speaker onto the outside of the window. <laughs> so it's got, got a bit of music when I'm driving. Right, I'm just going to fill up Mr Chip with some compost. Hi, I'm uh, Michael Sly. I'm um, born and bred local Queenstown boy and I spend my days composting and my nights distilling wilding pines. The cool thing about waste when managed correctly is, is it's actually an amazing resource. I like the challenge of seeing really large volumes of uh, what people think are a problem and turning it into something that's positive. On the mountains of Queenstown we have this issue with the Douglas fir tree that was introduced to the region becoming an invasive high risk pest for our local ecology. So 10 years ago we started the process of harvesting especially the smaller trees before they become a problem and turning them into essential oil. We generate a lot of mulch from the post distillation process of making the essential oils. And once you start generating all the mulch, you start thinking, what can you do with it? And um, that's when I got into the idea of doing hot composting. In this instance, I'm really focusing on the hotel food waste. There's about 20 tonnes a month going into this uh, pile. But that all blended together is the basis of beautiful nutrient-dense soil that we can use around the basin for food growing and native plant growing and stuff like that. We have a very successful tourism industry, and as part of that whole tourism experience, People are staying in hotels, they're eating food, and so naturally waste is created. The cool thing is that when you have, for example, a hotel, is that all that waste comes into one concentrated spot. So when you can take advantage of that concentrated nutrient dense food waste, it can become an amazing resource. Generally during the middle of the day or early in the morning, I have a, um, a composting loop, which is where I have groups of hotels that kind of all work together to right, make the right number of bins for me to pick up. Just arriving in Arrowtown, this is my next stop, and um, what's really cool about here is that we've pretty much got most of the um, major waste streams under control. All the coffee collection from all the different places. I end up collecting every week about 30,000 cups of coffee. About 80% of a cafe's waste by weight is actually coffee grounds, I've worked out. So that's a really important thing to be on top of. So when it comes to food waste, there's actually like three different tiers. At the top tier, we have Kiwi Harvest. They make sure any food that can be eaten is picked up and distributed to all the local food banks. Then there's food that might need some work done to it. And that's where groups like Baskets of Blessings turn that into meals. So they take all the parts that can't be eaten and take all the good stuff. And then I sit at the very bottom, uh, I'm the catchment that makes sure nothing gets to landfill and all that food waste is then turned into compost. It's interesting to look at tourism and say, okay, well, how can we construct and utilise that for positive outcomes in our community? And that's, I think, what the concept of regenerative tourism is. And I think food waste is actually a really nice example of how we can take something that's been created and to turn it into something of use for our community. It's quite easy to create really positive habits. Often, if you think about sustainability, it's really about how many positive steps can you make in a sequence. You don't have to take giant leaps. And so what is important to do is actually to play and try things out, take little steps in the right direction, and you'll be amazed at what you can achieve.